வெல்கம் ஆஸ் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு ஸ்பெஷல் வீடியோ பை சங்கர ஏஎஸ் அகாடமி இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி த மெயின்ஸ் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் ஜிஎஸ் பேப்பர் ஒன் ஜிஎஸ் பேப்பர் டூ அண்ட் ஜிஎஸ் பேப்பர் த்ரீ ஃப்ரம் த டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டூ மெயின்ஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் தட் ஆர் ரிஃப்ளெக்டட் ஃப்ரம் த டெய்லி ஹிந்து நியூஸ் அனலிசிஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் பை சங்கர் ஏஎஸ் அகாடமி ஐ ஆம் வெரி ஹாப்பி டு அனவுன்ஸ் தட் இஃப் யூ ஆர் அ ரெகுலர் வியூவர் ஆஃப் அவர் வீடியோ யூ வுட் பி ஏபிள் டு ஆன்சர் ஃபார்ட்டி ப்ளஸ் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த த்ரீ பேப்பர் ஹாலிஸ்டிக்கலி see the plan for today's video is this first i will start with gs paper 3 then move on to gs paper 2 and finally end with gs paper 1 what i will do is i will first read the question and tell you how to approach the question then i will say how to use our videos to give a holistic and a well rounded answer for the question this is the plan now without wasting much time let's get into the video look at this question This is question number 1 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. Why is public private partnership required in infrastructural projects? Examine the role of PPP model in the development of railway stations in India. See for the first part of the question you have to write about the advantage of PPP model in infrastructure projects. This we covered on our 22nd May 2020 Hindu news analysis which you can notice here. For the second part of the question you have to write about how the PPP model will help in the redevelopment of Indian railways. This part of the question can be answered if you had listened to our 5th July 2020 Hindu news analysis where we discussed an article titled Why has Indian railways opened doors for private players? In that discussion we have discussed about the role of private players and the PPP model in the development of Indian railways. So Both parts of the question can be answered with the content from these two videos. That's all regarding this question. Moving on to the next one. Look at this question. This is question number 2 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. Is inclusive growth possible under market economy? State the significance of financial inclusion in achieving economic growth in India. See India adopted LPG reforms in 1991. After that, India has become more and more market oriented. Now due to this inequality in India is on the rise. The rich is getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. It is due to this reason only UPSC has asked this question. This is a opinion based question. You can either say yes inclusive growth is possible under market economy and give supporting arguments or you can say no market economy is antithetic to inclusive growth. And for that also you have to give supporting arguments. In my opinion you have to start your answer by saying that inclusive growth is not possible in market economy and quote some data highlighting the increasing inequality in India here you can quote the data from the Oxfam inequality report titled inequality kills which we covered in our 31st January 2022 Hindu news analysis but you have to conclude in a balanced way by saying that inclusive growth under market economy is possible if proper policy measures are taken here you can write about how the scandinavian countries even though adhering to market economy have achieved inclusive growth this is about the first part of the question for the second part of the question you have to write about the advantages of financial inclusion in india particularly focusing on the role played by financial inclusion in regards to economic growth this part of the question can be answered by looking at our 15th march 2022 hindu news analysis in that we covered the need of microfinance institutions for economic growth since one of the major role played by microfinance institutions is to ensure financial inclusion the points that we discussed here can be used to address the second part of the question so using these two videos the question can be answered in its entirety that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 3 in gs paper 3 let me read out the question What are the major challenges of the public distribution system in India? How can it be made effective and transparent? See, this is a straightforward question. Here the examiner is asking us to write about the challenges or the issues with the public distribution system and how these issues can be addressed. The challenges and issues with the public distribution system part, we covered it while discussing about MSP in our 19th December 2020 Hindu news analysis. For the second part of the question we have to write about some solutions to address the issues see one of the major issue with pds is leakages in our 12th january 2022 hindu news analysis we saw about 
EPOS and its advantages. See, EPOS along with its various benefits also helps addressing leakages. This can be used while approaching the second part of the question. Then another major issue with PDS is that though it helps in addressing hunger, it does not solve the issue of malnutrition. This can be addressed using food fortification. We covered all the aspects of food fortification in our 17th May 2022 Hindu News Analysis. See, these points can be used in your answer as well. Okay, that's all regarding this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 4 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. Elaborate the scope and significance of food processing industry in India. See, we have covered all the aspects of this question on our 27th January 2022 Hindu News Analysis. In that discussion, we covered what is food processing, relevance of food processing sector, status of food processing sector in India, the significance of food processing sector, the issues with the food processing sector in India and the measures taken by the government to address these issues. So, from this one video itself, you can answer this question. Okay, that's all regarding this. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 5 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. The increase in life expectancy in the country has led to newer health challenges in the community. What are those challenges and what steps need to be taken to meet them? See, for this you have to start your answer by writing about why the average age of Indians is increasing. Then you have to write about the health related challenges faced by senior citizens. And finally, some steps that needs to be taken to address the issues. We have covered this question in its entirety in our 15th September 2022 Hindu News Analysis. In that discussion, we covered the reasons for the increase in old age population, the challenges faced by the old age population in India, the constitutional and the legal safeguards available to the senior citizens, and finally, the steps taken by the government to address the issues. Then again, in our 15th June 2022 Hindu News and Lessons, we exclusively covered the various schemes launched by the government exclusively for the senior citizens. These two videos can be used to address this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 7 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. Discuss in detail the photochemical smog emphasizing its formation, effects and mitigation. Explain the 1999 Guttenberg Protocol. See, the first part of the question we covered twice. In our 19th January 2022 Hindu News Analysis, we covered smog, photochemical smog, sulfurous smog, how they are formed and their effects. In the same discussion, we covered the mitigation strategy which is smog tower. Then, in our 20th August 2021 Hindu News Analysis, we covered the same aspects but focusing entirely on photochemical smog. These two videos can be used to address the first part of the question. See, we haven't talked about the 1999 Guttenberg Protocol in its entirety. So, using our videos, you can address 50% of this question. So, that's all regarding this question. Now, moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 8 in GS Paper 3. Let me read out the question. Explain the mechanism and occurrence of cloudburst in the context of Indian subcontinent. Discuss two recent examples. See, in our 11th September 2022 Hindu News Analysis, we covered all the aspects of cloudburst. In that discussion, we covered the formation of cloudburst, cloudburst risk prone areas in India, why the forecast of cloudburst is difficult, and the consequences of cloudburst. All these points can be used to address the first part of the question. For the second part, where they are asking us to cite two recent examples, we talked about the Kishtwad cloudburst on our 30th July 2021 Hindu News Analysis and the Chennai cloudburst on our 31st December 2021 Hindu News Analysis. So, by using our discussions, you can address this question in its entirety. Now, moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 10 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. What are the maritime security challenges in India? Discuss the organizational, technical and procedural initiatives taken to improve maritime security. See, the maritime security challenges we covered in various videos. For example, in our 6th July 2022 Hindu News Analysis, 
while discussing the belt and road initiative we covered the maritime challenges it poses for india with respect to pakistan sri lanka and maldives then in our 20th april 2021 hindu news analysis video while covering the issues of drug trafficking we saw how drug trafficking by sea poses a security challenge for india see we also covered the issue of sri lankan refugees on 11th april 2022 this also can be linked to maritime security challenges this addresses the first part of the question moving on to the second part see for the organizational initiative to ensure maritime security you can quote india stationing a liaison officer at the regional maritime information fusion center which we saw on 7th january 2021 you can also quote gso maa lemova and cam casa signed between india and the us which we saw on 30th october 2020 then for the technical initiative you can quote indian navy purchasing 9 p8i surveillance aircraft for the surveillance of bay of bengal which we saw on 7th january 2021 finally for the procedural initiative you can mentioned about the creation of the office of cds for the better coordination between the organs of defense infrastructure in india this we saw on our 8th january 2020 hindu news analysis like this you can use the facts we discussed during our discussion sessions for arriving at the answer for this question this is regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 12 in gs paper 3 let me read out the question Do you think India will meet 50% of its energy needs from renewable energy by 2030? Justify your answer. How will the shift of subsidies from fossil fuels to renewables help achieve the above objectives? Explain. See, the first part of the question is opinion based. You have to state your opinion of whether India will meet 50% of its energy needs from renewable energy by 2030 or not. Then, after stating your opinion, you have to substantiate it see we have covered this aspects through various videos see i am of the opinion that india will not be able to meet 50% of its energy needs from renewable energy by 2030 so i will state facts supporting this opinion of mine see in our 14th april 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the challenges associated with solar energy these points can be stated here then in our 24th april 2022 hindu news analysis we saw the issues of storage and issues of transmission associated with renewable energy i will link this with a question stating that since india is a fast growing power hungry country if india is being rational it will not rely heavily on renewable energy then in our 23rd october 2021 hindu news analysis we covered the duck curve associated with solar energy the duck curve shows that solar energy cannot be used to address peak demand finally in our 16th august 2022 hindu news analysis we saw that due to climate change efficiency of offshore wind farms have declined and it is expected that due to climate change solar farms will lose efficiency up to 10% see i will state all these facts to substantiate my opinion that india will not be able to meet 50% of its energy needs from renewable energy by 2030 okay this addresses the first part of the question now moving on to the second part for the second part of the question you have to write about how by providing subsidies to renewable energy india will achieve the objective of having 50% of its energy from renewable sources see one of the major issue associated with renewable energy is the cost currently is high compared to the energy produced from fossil fuels but with proper subsidy and pricing renewable energy in a competitive cost its use will increase with increase in use of renewable energy economies of scale can be achieved okay once the economy of scale is achieved the issues associated with renewable energy can be addressed for example here we can quote about the fame india 2 scheme which we saw on 13th june 2021 due to subsidies the use of electric vehicles is increasing with more electric vehicles on the road technologies such as battery swapping can be made possible this will further increase the use of renewable energy this is about the second part of the question so that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question 
Look at this question. This is question number 13 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. What are the main bottlenecks in the upstream and downstream process of marketing of agricultural products in India? See, we have covered the issues surrounding agriculture in general and agricultural marketing in particular in our 19th July 2020 Hindu News Analysis. We have also covered how to address the issues in the same discussion itself. So, using this, you can arrive at a decent answer for this question. So, that's all regarding this. Now, moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 14 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. What is an integrated farming system? How is it helpful to small and marginal farmers in India? See, we have covered everything about integrated farming system on our 15th July 2020 Hindu News Analysis. We have discussed what is integrated farming system, the need for integrated farming system, how the integrated farming system should be done and finally the advantages associated with integrated farming systems. All these points can be incorporated in your answer. So that's all regarding this question. Moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 15 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. Launched on 24th December 2021, James Webb Space Telescope has been much in use since then. What are its unique features which makes it superior to its predecessor space telescopes? What are the key goals of this mission? What potential benefits does it hold for the human race? See, the question is pretty straightforward. We have to write about how the James Webb Space Telescope is superior compared to other space telescopes. Then we have to write about the goals of the mission and finally the potential benefits of the mission. See we have covered all these aspects in our 29th December 2021 Hindu News Analysis. In that discussion we saw what a telescope is, the types of telescopes, then we saw about the James Webb Space Telescope. We saw how by observing infrared radiation from the space, the James Webb Space Telescope is able to pick up primordial light due to redshift. We saw how this is used to, to reconstruct the early universe. Then we saw about the objectives of the mission and finally we saw how this telescope is better than its predecessor that is the Hubble Space Telescope. All these points can be directly used to answer this question. That's all regarding this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 16 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. What is the basic principle behind vaccine development? How do vaccines work? What approaches were adopted by the Indian vaccine manufacturers to produce COVID-19 vaccines? See, for this question, you have to write about vaccines and the working of vaccines. After that, you have to mention about the steps taken by the pharmaceutical companies of India in vaccine development. See, for the first part, you can refer to our 13th August 2020 Hindu News Analysis where we discussed about what is a vaccine, its major components and the workings of the vaccine. For the second part of the question, you can refer to our 4th December 2020 Hindu News Analysis where we discussed about the clinical trial procedure followed by the Indian pharma companies for the development of COVID-19 vaccines. With these two videos, you can satisfactorily answer this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 17 in GS paper 3. Let me read out the question. Discuss global warming and mention its effects on global climate. Explain the control measures to bring down the levels of greenhouse gases which causes global warming in the light of the Kyoto Protocol 1997. See for the first part of the question, you have to write about the global warming and the effects of global warming on global climate. For this part, you can refer to our 17th January 2022 Hindu News Analysis where we cover the impacts of global warming in a 360 degree perspective. Then in our 18th September Hindu News Analysis, we covered the impacts of global warming on Indian monsoon. This can also be used while answering the first part of the question. Finally, in our 18th August 2022 Hindu News Analysis, we covered Arctic amplification due to global warming. This also can be used in your answer. Now moving on to the second part of the question. Here the examiner is asking us to write about the measures to control greenhouse gas emissions via Kyoto Protocol. So basically they are asking us to write about the carbon market and the clean development mechanism. This we covered in our 15th November 2021 Hindu News Analysis. That is all regarding this question. Moving forward, let us take up the next question. 
look at this question this is question number 18 in gs paper 3 let me read out the question explain the causes and effects of coastal erosion in india what are the available coastal management techniques for combating the hazard see this is a very simple question here the examiner is asking us to write about the causes of coastal erosion the effects of coastal erosion and how coastal erosion can be managed see we have covered what is coastal erosion its causes and the mitigation strategies in our 9th june 2021 hindu news analysis we have covered the effects of coastal erosion in our 12th april 2021 hindu news analysis using these videos you can write a very good answer for this question that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 19 in gs paper 3 let me read out the question what are the different elements of cyber security keeping in view the challenges in cyber security examine the extent to which india has successfully developed a comprehensive national cyber security strategy see for this question we have to address two things one is the different elements of cyber security and the other is we have to write about the national cyber security strategy see on our 6th march 2021 hindu news analysis we covered the institutional capacities in india to deal with cyber security issues there we covered indian cyber security coordination center computer emergency response team national critical information infrastructure protection center national security council national information board national cyber security coordinator and the defense cyber agency also in our 18th april 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the national cyber security strategy in its entirety these points can be used to arrive at a valid answer for this question that is all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 20 in gs paper 3 let me read out the question nexalism is a social economic and developmental issue manifesting violent internal security threat in this context discuss the emerging issues and suggest a multi layered strategy to tackle the menace of nexalism your answer for this question must contain two parts in the first part you have to write about the social economic and developmental issues that have resulted in the growth of nexalism this we have covered in our 29th december 2020 hindu news analysis and your second part of the answer must contain the steps that have to be taken to tackle the menace of nexalism this also we have covered in the same video we have also covered the government measures to counter nexalism as a part of our 8th august 2020 hindu news analysis using these two videos you can arrive at a pretty good answer for this question that's all regarding this question having seen the questions that are reflected from gs paper 3 Let us move on to GS paper 2. Look at this question. This is question number 1 in GS paper 2. Let me read out the question. The most significant achievement of modern law in India is constitutionalization of environmental problems by the Supreme Court. Discuss this statement with the help of relevant case law. See, this is a very interesting question. What the examiner is asking us in this question is how through various judgments the supreme court has taken steps to address the environmental problems in india see only after the visaka guidelines were introduced by the apex court in 1997 the government enacted the sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act of 2013 this is an example of constitutionalization of problems faced by women by the supreme court likewise in this question they are asking us to state examples of constitutionalization of environmental problems by the supreme court we as a part of hindu news analysis have covered various case laws that can be used to address this question for example on our 13th march 2020 hindu news analysis we have covered the arjun gopal ors vs union of india case through this case the supreme court banned the use of barium salts in firework manufacture and allowed the manufacture of only green fireworks then on our 11th june 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the supreme court order directing the establishment of eco sensitive zones around the protected areas and finally on our 1st january 2020 hindu news analysis we covering the jitendra singh vs ministry of environment case we saw that the supreme court observed protection of village commons is essential to safeguard the fundamental rights guaranteed by article 21 of our constitution see all these case laws can be quoted in your answer for this question okay so that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 2 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question 
right of movement and residence throughout the territory of india are freely available to the indian citizens but these rights are not absolute comment see for this question we have to cover two things in our answer one is the provision in the constitution that ensures freedom of movement and next is the provisions that restrict the freedom of movement see in second part of the answer while addressing the provisions that restrict the freedom of movement we have to write the reasons why the freedom of movement is restricted also see the first part of the answer we covered in our 5th march 2021 hindu news analysis where we covered article 19 of the constitution again in our 14th july 2022 hindu news analysis we covered various case laws that ensure freedom of movement as far as the second part of the question is concerned we have covered the restriction of freedom of movement while covering the inner line permit in our 28th december 2020 hindu news analysis and also while covering extendment order in our 30th january 2022 hindu news analysis so using these discussions you can address all the parts of this question okay that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 3 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question to what extent in your opinion has the decentralization of power in india changed the governance landscape at the grassroots see this is an opinion based question you can either take the position yes decentralization of power in india has indeed changed the governance landscape at the grassroots or you can say no decentralization of power in india has not changed the governance landscape at the grassroots but the thing is that you have to support your opinion with necessary supporting statements see on our 24th april 2021 hindu news analysis we have covered the merits of the local bodies the issues with the local bodies and also the steps that can be taken to address these issues see these points can be used when you take either of the opinions also in our 24th june 2022 hindu news analysis we saw one major issue with the local bodies that is even though women are elected it is their husbands who are calling the shots the data we saw during this discussion can be used in your answer if you are of the opinion that no decentralization of power in india has not changed the governance landscape at the grassroots in that discussion we also discussed how to address these issues this also can be incorporated in your answer as well so almost all part of this question can be addressed by looking at these videos okay so that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 4 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question discuss the role of vice presidents of india as chairman of rajya sabha see for this question the examiner is asking us to list out various roles played by the vice president while he is functioning as the chairman of rajya sabha see in our 13th september 2022 hindu news analysis we have covered the functions of speaker of lok sabha see the vice president while functioning as chairman of rajya sabha performs similar functions so these points can be used in your answers okay again in our 29th july 2022 hindu news analysis while covering the suspension of members of rajya sabha we again saw the powers of the chairman of rajya sabha this also can be used in your answer see these two videos is sufficient to answer this question okay that's all regarding this question now let us take up the next question look at this question this is question number 5 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question discuss the role of national commission for backward classes in the wake of its transformation from a statutory body to a constitutional body see recently the national commission for backward classes was in the news because the government through the 102nd constitutional amendment act transformed it from a statutory body to a constitutional body upsc has asked this question due to this In this question the examiner is asking us to write about the role and function of National Commission for Backward Classes. See we have covered all the aspects of this question on our 11th August 2021 Hindu news analysis. We have covered the 102nd Constitutional Amendment Act in its entirety. Then on the same discussion we also covered the Maratha reservation issue and the 127th Constitutional Amendment Bill. 
that aims to restore the power of the state to amend the state social and educational backward class list okay as far as the role of national commission for backward classes is concerned in our 16th july 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the functions of national commission for scheduled caste see the national commission for backward class performs the same role as the national commission for scheduled caste the main difference is that the ncbc focuses on the backward class and the ncsc focuses on the scheduled caste so you can use these points in your answer okay that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 6 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question the gati shakti yojana needs meticulous coordination between the government and the private sector to achieve the goal of connectivity discuss see we all know gati shakti yojana focuses on creating a synergy between various ministries in this question the examiner is asking us to write about the need for coordination between the government and the private sector to achieve the goal of connectivity since the keyword here in this question is discuss in the first part of the question we have to focus on the need for coordination between the government and the private sector then in the conclusion part you can arrive at a balanced view by stating some counter arguments this is how you have to approach this question see gati shakti yojana we have covered many times as a part of our hindu news analysis for example in our 23rd january 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the six pillars of gatti shakti yojana we also covered the advantages and challenges associated with gatti shakti yojana all these points can be used while writing this answer okay so that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 7 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question The Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 remains only a legal document without intense sensitization of government functionaries and citizens regarding disability. Comment. See, in this question the examiner is asking us to list out the issues with the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016. See for the introduction part you can mention about the issues faced by persons with disabilities. See in our 22nd May 2020 Hindu News Analysis we have covered the various issues faced by persons with disabilities focusing mainly on the lockdown to address their problem the government brought the Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act 2016 we covered the provisions of the act in our 9th May 2022 Hindu News Analysis although this act has its merits it still has some limitations the steps that can be taken to address the limitations of the acts were covered when we covered the draft disability policy on our 15th july 2022 hindu news analysis see these points can be used to address all the aspects of the question okay that's all regarding this question now let us take a look at the next question look at this question this is question number 9 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question india is a age old friend of sri lanka discuss india's role in the recent crisis in sri lanka in the light of the preceding statement see in this question first in the introduction you have to write two or three points substantiating the statement india is an age old friend of sri lanka then we have to write the reasons for the current crisis in sri lanka finally we have to write about how india is helping sri lanka address the issue this is one method of approaching this question we have covered all the aspects of this question as a part of our hindu news analysis for example in our 22nd march 2022 hindu news analysis we have covered the reasons for the current crisis in sri lanka then in our 22nd july 2022 hindu news analysis we covered india's role in the recent sri lanka crisis here you can also mention about the concerns of india regarding sri lanka china relations which we covered in the 11th january 2022 hindu news analysis you can link this and write how the current crisis in sri lanka is an apt time for india to act and reduce china's influence in sri lanka so you can use all the three videos to address all the aspects of this question okay that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 9 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question Do you think that Bimstech is a parallel organization like the Sark? What are the similarities and dissimilarities between the two? 
how are indian foreign policy objectives realized by the formation of this new organization the question here has three parts the first part is opinion based you have to say whether bimstek and sark are parallel organization or whether sark has lost its relevance and bimstek is built on the ashes of sark the second part of the question is direct you have to mention about the similarities and the differences between sark and bimstek finally for the third part you have to mention the role played by bimstek in helping india realize its foreign policy goals this is how you have to approach this question now let us see how you can use our program to arrive at the answer for this question see in our 29th march 2022 hindu news analysis while seeing the significance of bimstek we saw that it is a platform for interregional coordination between sark and asian members so bimstek is not there to replace sark but it exists as a parallel organization then on our 24th february 2020 hindu news analysis we saw all aspects of sark and bimstek using that information you can address the second part of the question that is similarities and differences between sark and bimstek finally on our 30th march 2022 hindu news analysis we saw the significance of bimstek and the significance of bimstek for india this can be used to address the third part of the question that how bimstek is helping india realize india's foreign policy so all the part of the question can be answered that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 12 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question discuss the essential conditions for exercise of legislative powers by the governor discuss the legality of repromulgation of ordinances by the governor without placing them before the legislature see for the first part of the question we have to write about the conditions that must prevail for the governor to use his ordinance making power for the second part of the question you have to highlight whether it is legal for the governor to repromulgate the ordinance without placing it in the legislature see the exact aspects of this question we covered in our 20th of april 2021 hindu news analysis look at this article written by mr m r madhavan who is the president and co-founder of the prs legislative research in this article discussion titled the ordinance route is bad repromulgation is worse we discussed everything that is required to answer this question in this discussion we covered article 216 which deals with the ordinance making power of the governor we also discussed the criticism surrounding repromulgation of ordinance we also discussed the legality of the repromulgation of ordinance by the governor in the same discussion itself this single video is enough to write a very good answer for this question so that's all regarding this question now let us move on to the next question look at this question this is question number 13 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question while the national political parties in india favor centralization the regional parties are in favor of state autonomy comment see this is a pretty straight forward question you have to address two things one is why the national parties favor centralization and the other is why the regional parties favor state autonomy we covered the first part of the question on our 4th may 2022 hindu news analysis in that while covering the indian form of quasi federalism we saw why india adopted this type of federalism these points can be used to address the first part of the question for the second part of the question we can refer to our 21st december 2021 hindu news analysis in that we saw various measures taken by the central government that have weakened the state autonomy these points can be cited as the reasons why the regional parties favor state autonomy so this question can be addressed using these two videos that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 15 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question discuss the role of election commission of india in the light of the evolution of model code of conduct this is also a straight forward question here the examiner is asking us to write about the role of election commission of india in the evolution of model code of conduct in the introduction you can write about the election commission we covered the election commission elaborately on our 16th april 2021 hindu news analysis then on our 16th april 2019 hindu news analysis we covered the evolution of model code of conduct over the years 
finally in our 19th april 2021 hindu news analysis we have covered elaborately about the model code of conduct in that video we discussed about the features of model code of conduct the issues and the criticism against model code of conduct the content from these three videos is enough to aptly answer this question that's all regarding this question now let us take up the next question look at this question this is question number 16 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question besides the welfare schemes india needs deft management of inflation and unemployment to serve the poor and the underprivileged section of the society discuss see for this question you have to divide the answer into three parts in the first part you have to address the issues with the welfare schemes in the second part you have to write about how managing inflation yields better results in reducing poverty than welfare schemes and finally you have to write about the advantages of employment generation schemes over welfare schemes this is one way to approach this question see almost all these parts we have covered as a part of our hindu news analysis for example in our 20th august 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the issues with freebies the same can be said about welfare schemes as well okay so this addresses the first part of the question then for inflation control we covered inflation targeting and the role of rbi in managing inflation in our 3rd april 2021 hindu news analysis then in our 13th september 2022 hindu news analysis then in our 13th september 2022 hindu news analysis we covered the role played by the government in inflation control and we covered the effects of inflation in our 11th december 2021 hindu news analysis this addresses the second part of the question for the third part we covered the various steps taken by the government to increase employment generation in india in our 14th february 2022 and 17th february 2022 hindu news analysis so using this information you can manage to give a good answer for this question that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 16 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question how will i to you to india israel uae usa grouping transform india's position in global politics this is a straight forward question where you have to write about the significance of i to you to particularly its role in transforming india's position in global geopolitics see in our 15th july 2022 hindu news analysis we covered every aspects of i to you to which can be used while approaching this question see the major significance of i to you to is of the four member nation one is a hindu majority country one is a muslim majority country one is a christian majority country and the last one is a jewish country see this is part of india's all alignment policy we covered india's all alignment or multi engagement policy on our 14th september 2022 hindu news analysis the point covered during the discussion can also be repurposed in the answer so using these two videos you can give a satisfactory answer for this question that is all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 20 in gs paper 2 let me read out the question clean energy is the order of the day describe briefly india's changing policy towards climate change in various international fora in the context of geopolitics see for this question you have to start your answer by first substantiating the statement clean energy is the order of the day then you have to mention some events highlighting india's changing policy towards climate change finally you have to mention the steps taken by india to address climate change in various international forums this is how you have to approach the question now let us see how we can use our hindu news analysis to help framing the answer for this question see we covered flash floods forest fires and other disasters in various videos all these calamities have increased in severity due to climate change and one of the ways to address climate change is adopting clean energy see like this you can use your own words to substantiate the statement given in the question now moving on to the next part of the question india's changing policy towards climate change to address this question you can refer to our 2nd november 2021 hindu news analysis in which he covered cop26 glasgow summit in cop26 india for the first time accepted to achieve net zero emission by 2070 this is a major change in india's climate change policy we have also covered the commitments made by india which can also be used in your answer 
see india has mentioned about climate change in various international forums for example one of the important components of bimstech is climate change which we covered on our 29th march 2022 hindu news analysis then in the recently held g20 meeting india mentioned its readiness to address climate change which we covered in our 1st september 2022 hindu news analysis even in quad india is using this forum to achieve its climate goals which we covered in our 12th february 2022 hindu news analysis and finally india is part of the international solar alliance along with france which we covered while looking at the indo france relations in our 3rd may 2021 hindu news analysis all these points can be used in your answer that's all regarding this question having seen the reflections from gs paper 2 Let us finally take up GS paper 1. This is question number 1 from GS paper 1. Let me read out the question first. How will you explain the medieval Indian temple sculptures represent the social life of those days? See, this is a very straightforward question. Here, the examiner is asking us to write about the medieval Indian temple architecture and how the sculptures reflect the social life of that time. So, in your answer you have to mention various sculptures from the medieval times then you have to mention its unique features and finally you have to mention how it reflected the social life of those times see first i must admit that we are a current affairs team and the question is clearly a static question but you can use the content from our program to address the question for example on our 4th september 2022 hindu news analysis we discussed about gangai konda cholapuram and gangai konda choleshwara temple then on our 22nd september 2021 hindu news analysis we covered the group of monuments in hampi in that we talked about the virupaksha temple vitala temple and the narasimha sculpture on our 18th july 2021 hindu news analysis we covered the architecture of the kakatiya kingdom then on our 10th december 2020 hindu news analysis we covered the greater living chola temples then on our 5th january 2020 hindu news analysis we covered the elephanta caves finally in our 24th december 2021 hindu news analysis we talked about the monuments in mahabalipuram okay now coming back to the question see to answer this question you must not just mention the unique features of the medieval indian sculpture you have to write how the sculpture reflected the social life of those times for example you can mention about the monolithic narasimha sculpture of hampi and mention that to build such a huge monolithic sculpture skilled artisans must be present also since it is a monolithic sculpture made of granite moving the sculpture and the stone required for making the sculpture should have required good transportation connectivity so a good network of safe road and sturdy roads must have been present at that time so using the narasimha sculpture of hampi we can infer that the vijayanagara empire was prosperous so this is how you can use the content that we have provided and add your insight while articulating the answer that's all regarding this question now moving on to the next question look at this question this is question number 2 in gs paper 1 let me read out the question Why did the armies of the British East India Company mostly comprising of Indian soldiers win consistently against the more numerous and better equipped armies of the Indian rulers give reasons see this is also a straightforward static question the examiner in this question is asking us to mention the reason for the failure of the Indian army against the British army to answer this question you have to divide your answer into three parts In the first part of the answer you have to mention the negatives of the Indian army maintained by the native rulers then you have to mention the unique features of the British army finally you have to mention the positives of the unique features of the British army see this is also a very static question as i have already mentioned and it is also a very easy question so almost everyone will write a similar answer to fetch extra marks you have to make your answers unique how to make your answer unique for this question see you have to substantiate your answer with history to further your argument this is where our hindu news analysis comes in on our 7th january 2021 hindu news analysis we talked about the palayakarar system in tamil nadu and we also talked about veerabadiya kattabomman 
In that part, we mentioned how the Raja of Pudukotai betrayed Kattabuman and handed him over to the British. You can use this information in your answer. See, one of the negatives of the Indian army was Indian natives were not united. So, while mentioning this, you can quote this piece of history to substantiate your argument. Then on our 1st January 2020 Hindu News Analysis, we talked about the Bhimma Kurihan battle. You can also use this information in your answer. See, one of the negatives of the army of the Indian natives was that it was very caste-ridden. To substantiate this argument, you can mention about the Bhimma Kurigon battle. Then on our 22nd January 2021 Hindu News Analysis, we covered the Carnatic Wars. We covered all the three Carnatic Wars during this discussion. See, one of the positives of the British Army was it had very good generals who were well versed in the state of Warcraft. To substantiate this argument, you can mention about the Battle of Arcot. 1751 that we discussed here. It was due to the clever plan of Robert Clive, the British attacked Arkat which resulted in Chanda Sahib lifting his siege in Tiruchirappalli. So, if you substantiate your answer like this, you can fetch more marks than your contemporaries. So, even for a pure static question like this, you can use our Hindu news analysis for value addition purposes. Okay, this is all regarding this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 3 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Why was there a sudden spurt in famines in colony in India since the mid 18th century? Give reasons. See, even though famines were not new in India, the famines that occurred after the advent of British were mostly human made and the famines that occurred before the arrival of British were due to natural causes like droughts. This is the reason they have asked this question. In this question, the examiner is asking us to give reasons for the increase in the occurrence of droughts after the arrival of British. See, this is a straightforward static question which can be easily answered if you have gone through the basic NCRT. But here also you can use our Hindu news analysis for value addition. See, one of the reasons for the increase in famine after the arrival of British is that the British prioritized commercial crops over food crops. One of the important policy of the British that talks about this is the Teen Katya system. We have covered the Teen Katya system as a part of our 3rd July 2022 Hindu News Analysis. Another reason for the increase in frequency of famines was the drain of wealth policy followed by the British. And in our 14th August 2022 Hindu News Analysis, while talking about Dada by Nauroji, we covered the drain of wealth theory. That's all regarding this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 5 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Discuss the meaning of color-coded weather warnings for cyclone-prone areas given by the Indian Meteorological Department. See, this is a very direct question. So I think I don't need to explain how to approach this question. See, we have covered the color-coded weather warnings of the IMD twice. Once on our 9th April 2021 Hindu News Analysis and again on our 29th August 2021 Hindu News Analysis. If you had gone through any of the videos that I just mentioned, you can easily answer this question. In both the videos, we covered the color-coded weather warning system of Indian Meteorological Department and also the meaning associated with each colors. Okay? Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 6 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Discuss the natural resource potential of Deccan trap. See, on the looks of it, this question looks very easy and direct. But you have to approach the question carefully. See, the examiner is asking us to discuss the natural resource potential of Deccan trap and not Deccan plateau. Deccan trap is basically the basalt trap formed when Indian landmass was moving over the Reunion Island hotspot. So, your main focus must be on the natural resource potential of the Deccan trap. Okay? Also note that if you focus only on the mineral resources, it would be a narrow approach to the question. In my opinion, you have to take a broader look here. So, we have to cover all the natural resources including soil and topography. Deccan trap has rigor or black soil that helps in cotton and sugarcane cultivation. Also, the topography of the area has huge hydroelectric potential. You have to mention all these aspects in your answers. 
See, in our Hindu news analysis also, we have covered the various aspects that can be used in your answer. On our 24th May 2020 Hindu news analysis, we covered the distribution of cotton crops in India. On our 18th June 2022 Hindu news analysis, we have covered the distribution of sugar cane crops. So, all these aspects can be used in your answer. See, this is how you have to approach this question and this is how you have to use our Hindu news analysis for enriching your answer. Having seen this, now we can move on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 7 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Examine the potential of wind energy in India and explain the reasons for their limited spatial spread. See, this question has two parts. In the first part, the examiner is asking us to write about the wind energy potential in India. For the second part of the question, you have to mention about the factors that result in limiting the spatial spread of the wind energy. This is how you have to approach this question. Now let us see how you can use our Hindu news analysis discussion to enrich your answer. See here, in our 4th April 2022 Hindu news analysis, we have covered wind energy. Again, in our 24th April 2022 Hindu news analysis, while talking about the renewable energy potential in India, we covered the wind energy potential in India. Then, in our 8th August 2020 Hindu news analysis, we covered wind energy along with wind energy potential in India and also its distribution. This information can be used to address the first part of the question. See for the second part of the question also we can use this data. That is wind energy system requires an average annual wind speed of at least 15 km per hour. See this is an major limiting factor in the spatial spread of wind energy. Again. In our 24th April 2022 Hindu news analysis, while talking about the challenges associated with renewable energy, we covered the reasons for the restricted spatial spread of wind energy. This can be also used to address the second part of the question. So that's all regarding this question. Now moving on. Look at this question. This is question number 10 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Given the diversities among the tribal communities in India, in which specific context should they be considered as a single category? See, this question has to be answered in two parts. In the first part of the answer, you have to substantiate the statement. There is diversity among tribal communities in India. After that, in the second part of the answer, you have to write in what all aspects the tribal communities in India have similarities. This is how you have to approach this question. Now, let us see how you can use our Hindu news analysis to answer this question. See, as I already mentioned, in the first part of the answer, you have to provide examples highlighting the diversity among tribal communities in India. In our 21st March 2021 Hindu news analysis, we covered the Shompan tribe and their distinct features. In our 11th July 2022 Hindu news analysis, we covered the unique features of the Koya tribe. Again, on our 29th March 2022 Hindu news analysis, we covered the various features of the Dalongs of Tirpura. You can mention these tribes and their unique features and in turn highlighting the diversity of the tribal population in India. This is regarding the first part of the answer. Then for the second part of the question, you have to highlight the similarity among the tribal communities. For that, look at our Hindu news analysis on 11th June 2021. In that, while talking about the similarities among the particularly vulnerable tribal groups, we talked about various points. These points can be used in the second part of the question. Okay, this is how you can use our Hindu news analysis to address this question. That's all regarding this question. Now let us move on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 11 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. The political and administrative reorganization of state and territories has been a continuous ongoing process since the mid 19th century. Discuss with examples. This is a direct question but with a twist. The moment we see the word reorganization of states, we mostly focus on the reorganization that happened post-independence. But in the question, it is given reorganization of states and territories has been a continuous ongoing process since the mid-19th century. So we have to look at all the reorganization that happened since the 1850s. So along with the reorganization that happened post-independence, we must focus on partition of Bengal and partition of India. This is how you have to approach this question. 
See, in our 10th August 2022 Hindu news analysis, we covered partition of Bengal. Then, on our 20th February 2020 Hindu news analysis, we covered the reasons and the events that led to the partition of India. Finally, in our 17th September 2020 Hindu news analysis, we covered the linguistic reorganization of states. In that, we covered SK Dar Committee, JVP Committee and Fazal Ali Committee. This covers 50% of your answer. Then you have to write about the formation of states like Uttarakhand, Goa, Jharkhand, finally concluding in Telangana. We have not exclusively covered it. So, using our discussion, you can cover 50% of the answer for this question. That's all regarding this question. Moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 12 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Discuss the main contributions of Gupta period and Chola period to Indian heritage and culture. See, this is a very direct and static question. So, I don't think I need to explain how to approach this question. In our Hindu news analysis, we have covered the contribution of the Chola period to Indian heritage and culture quite extensively. We cover it on 4th September 2022, 11th August 2022, 22nd April 2022, 2nd August 2021 and 10th December 2020. All these can be used in your answer. This covers 50% of the question. As far as Guptas are concerned, we have not covered them like we did the Cholas. So, using our Hindu news analysis, you can manage 50% of your answer for this question. That's all regarding this question. Now, moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 14 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. What are the forces that influence ocean currents? Discuss their role in the fishing industries of the world. This is also a straightforward question. Your answer should have two parts. One part addressing the forces that influences ocean currents and the other part mentioning the role played by ocean currents in influencing the fishing industries of the world. This question can be easily answered if you have listened to our 7th March 2021 Hindu news analysis. In that we covered the various forces that influence ocean currents. This covers the first part of the answer. Then in the same video, while covering the significance of ocean currents, how mixing of warm and cold currents create ideal fishing grounds. Okay, finally, in our 15th April 2022 Hindu news analysis, while discussing about the effects of El Nino, we saw that during El Nino years, the cold Peru current is replaced by warm current. This results in amount of fish and plankton of the coast of Peru in decline. From this, you can infer that Cold ocean currents are plankton rich and are good fishing grounds. This information can be used to address the second part of the question. That's all regarding this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 16 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Mention the significance of straits and isthmus in international trade. This is a easy question. See for this question in your answer you have to mention various straits and isthmus of the world and mention their significance in international trade. We have covered various traits in our Hindu news analysis which can be used in your answer. For example, in our 28th September 2021 Hindu news analysis, we have covered the significance of Taiwan Strait. Again, in our 29th July 2022 Hindu news analysis, while talking about the Hambandota port, we covered the importance of Strait of Gibraltar, Suez Canal, Strait of Hormuz, Babal Mandap Strait, and the Strait of Malacca in terms of world trade. Finally, in our first March 2022 Hindu news analysis, we covered the importance of Bosporus Strait and Dardanelles Strait. All these can be used while answering this question. Okay, that's all regarding this question. Now moving on to the next question. Look at this question. This is question number 19 in GS paper 1. Let me read out the question. Are tolerance, assimilation and pluralism the key elements in the making of Indian form of secularism. Justify your answer. Here, in this question, the examiner is asking us to highlight the uniqueness of the Indian form of secularism. We have to justify using various examples how Indian form of secularism ensures tolerance, ensures assimilation of religion and finally pluralism. Here, the tolerance and the pluralism part we have covered on number of occasions in our Hindu news analysis. For example, in our 15th February 2022 Hindu news analysis, we cover the difference between Western and the Indian model of secularism, highlighting how Indian form of secularism ensures pluralism. Then, 
in our 6th April 2022 Hindu news analysis we covered the constitutional provisions for Indian form of secularism and the uniqueness of the Indian form of secularism finally in our 17th March 2022 Hindu news analysis while covering the hijab issue we covered the role of judiciary and constitution in upholding the Indian form of secularism all this can be used to address the tolerance and pluralism part of the question the assimilation part is very simple for that part you can write how diwali christmas and eid are celebrated by all religion in india then you can write about how even though there is a lot of variation in hindu rituals in various part of the country everyone is brought under the umbrella of hindu religion see likewise you can mention other general points as well to address the assimilation part of the question okay that's all regarding this question i hope you found the session useful see the reflection shows the importance of current affairs and the daily hindu news analysis in your preparation journey i hope you continue to watch our video and argument your current affairs preparation that's all for today if you like this video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankar as academy's youtube channel Thank you for listening.